here we have a gigabyte 4090 video card that came in for repair and that's one big card big thick card and right off the bat i see a problem with the pcie connector on the far edge the first pin let's go under the microscope and see what's going on we did not disassemble the card because that's something that we can work on from the surface if we have any issues then we can disassemble the card spend the time and do further inspection but for now we're good so you can see that we have damage on that connector we have damage here I do not see any cracks on that board no cracks here no cracks here and that's a good thing that's one thick board a lot of layers and you have a lot of lines running within the layers but we do not have any cracks however we do have a broken pad right on the very edge now if we flip the card let's look at the other side and I do see damage to that connector we'll glue whatever layers we see here and we'll clamp them and that's basically the only thing that we can do here as long as the board is pressed and glued we should be okay I mean this type of damage is really tricky we do not know how the pins will behave when you insert that card in the PCIe slot but we're gonna do our best for this one here we still have a tiny piece left on top a tiny piece of pad left on top so we know that piece is making a connection with the wire that's going somewhere within the layers of the board or somewhere on back of the board so what we're gonna do for this one instead of running a wire because we're gonna have a long wire and that wire will probably break if we insert the card because the wire is from the bottom and not from the top I did a video yesterday where we restored the wire from the top and that's okay but from the bottom I think what we're gonna do is cut a pad off another video card we're gonna glue that pad on here and solder it from the top I have a donor video card here that we can use to get that pad and how do we get that pad off the board we're gonna use heat because those pads are glued so they're only stuck with the glue and then we can cut the very top so let's start by applying heat and we're gonna pry that pad upwards right there that's all we need and we can cut that pad from here right so we got that pad and now we need to solder that pad down here how do we do that no problem we're gonna use original Amtac flux and the pad got stuck to my syringe great job if you're a hobbyist or in the same type of business you can buy original Amtac flux directly from us we are one of the major distributors of the flux along with everything that we are using on our bench here everything from this amazing microscope articulating on for the microscope the anti glare light the ring light hot air station soldering station thermal camera tweezers braidwick one of the best braidwicks on the market everything can be bought off our site just log in to northwishfix.com click on shop add to cart check out pay and we almost always ship out same day and for all of you who have ordered from us before you know how fast we ship 
we're going to be using the NF dot mini pen. The Northwich Fix mini pen. We have them in the red version now. The latest and greatest. And the pen comes with three tips. Conical, bent, and knife. I'm currently using the knife tip. And the reason I like the knife tip is it's multi-purpose. I can use the very fine edge of the tip or I can use the whole tip flat for more heat transfer. That's it. That's all we need to do. Now that card is very high off the bench, so I'm not able to rest my wrist on the bench while working on it. Okay. We got it. Now, some viewers asked in the last video where we did a similar repair, we ran a wire. They said, wouldn't that bulge cause problems? No, you need to know how the PCIe slot works. It clamps onto the pin. Each clamp is independent of the other. So we have two clamps that go on front and back of the board, two clamps that go on front and back of the board. Same goes for all the pins. So one bulge here is not gonna affect how the clamp is clamped onto that pin and it's not going to affect how clamps work on the other pins and that bulge under the microscope looks like a bulge but it's nothing all right so i made it as flat as possible and it looks amazing. Hopefully that's the only thing wrong with the card. As long as the layers within the card, the lines running within the layers of the card are not damaged. A lot of viewers are asking for online training. When we train in the shop here, the micro soldering course, for example, as of now, it's $3,500. The repair course is $4,200. If I did record a training course where you can buy that training course, it's going to be a lot cheaper. Let's say we price it at $900 or $800 for each course, whatever. Okay. The reason the course is expensive when you are in the shop, we only have a couple of students. We do not take 10, 20 students. We only take a couple of students so I can focus on those students. Now, the time it takes to train those students in the class, it's a three hour course every day. In three hours, I can do 10 laptops. How much money do I make fixing 10 laptops compared to how much money are we gonna get paid when I train those people? I'm not fixing when I'm training. So we are losing. We are really losing when I train and not fix. But people have been asking for training since a long time ago, and we decided to take few people in in every workshop. It's a lot more profitable for us to fix than to train. But if I did the course online and a lot of people are asking for that training course to be online, then I do not have to spend that time to train the students. The knowledge will be the same. But the difference is when you are in the shop here in our workshop then you can ask questions directly you get quick answers you can see how the tools work i'll be over you watching no you're doing it wrong try it like this try it like that so it's more beneficial when you are in the workshop here but if you do buy the online course it's going to be the same knowledge as long as you practice 
and I'll probably have some type of a private forum for students who bought the course to ask questions and I'll dedicate time to answer them. That's where training is going right now. We have a long list of students who want to come into the workshop, but I cannot take everyone. I'm giving priority to locals or people who reserve before time until we have the online course ready where you can just purchase the course and watch it as many times as you want for a lower price. We cannot do lower price in the workshop here because of the reasons I explained. So right now all we need to do is I'll probably add a tiny drop of glue under that pad from under, maybe within the layers, clamp them, wait about an hour, and we can test again. Very nice. Let's flip the board and see if there's anything we can do from the back. So it looks like the pins are not peeling off the board, but the board is peeling off itself. So we're going to add glue right here. And I have a lot of glue. I only put one tiny drop, but it's a lot. Now all we have to do is clamp and I'll be back in about maybe 30 minutes or an hour with the final results. Whether this card works or not, I'll still post this video so you can see how fixing pins on the PCI connector works or if the card works, awesome, even better. I'll be back. Now we have now we have another card that came in as an expedited service, EVGA, what's new, right? And this one is not detected. So I'm not going to combine this video card and this video. I'll probably do a separate video. All right, so it's been like 25 minutes and I think I'm ready to remove the clamp and see if that card will work. Okay, so I removed So those are the spudgers I was using along with this I sandwiched the connector and clamped it from both sides Let's take a look at the pins I mean that board is already broken from the bottom so Yeah, that's the thin part of the board there's nothing I can do about this unless I want to grind it but I do not want to grind it so we do not cause any issues let me flip the board look at the other side and did that pin make oh yeah oh yeah that pin made a solid connection beautiful that pin made a solid connection. Maybe I can add UV mask also. UV mask is not used as a glue. It's used to hide copper. So I'm not even sure if UV mask will work here. We can try it, but I highly doubt it's going to work. If we have exposed copper here, the mask is scratched. We can use UV mask, but UV is not glue. Do not confuse UV mask with glue. We now carry and sell UV mask in black, blue, red, and green. Very high quality UV mask, and as you can see, it hardens in seconds. I use hot air along with 
UV light. And we're done. The connector is in. And the PCIe adapter. Okay, HDMI cable, and we're gonna hope for the best. We're gonna look at the monitor, and let's power the card on. One, two, and three. The card is powering on, and hopefully we have an image. Do we have an image? Do we have an image? Yes, yes, yes. The card is working. Amazing. Amazing. We did an amazing job. We're going to have to let the customer know to be careful when he plugs the card in because that connector is weak. There's nothing that we can do to reconstruct the bottom, but the card is working. We did it. Power supply off. We're done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.